I was teaching a pastel class about color theory and how you can set up a thing with a halogen light, set it up. And then the concept was that you could arbitrarily give the light a color code. You could say it's going to be a cool light. So a lot of time when you have artificial light, how many of you are artists? So, so a lot of time when you have artificial light, sometimes between the shadows and the highlights, you can't tell which is which, which is warm, which is cool. And as you paint more and more, you get confused. So it's always good to have in your mind that your light is warm and your shadows are cool, or your light is cool and your shadows are warm. And then that helps you keep things organized. So this is a pastel. It was a red uh, um, cashmere cloth and a little gold box and background. And this was with a cool light. So the same halogen light, but like if I flip it to here, that's the same setup. It's the same one, same stuff. So it's like, which one is really the color? You know, so going back to it, so this one, I had a cool light. And so all the warmth and the warm reds and stuff went into the shadows. So um, the box, the gold box is actually made of limes, greens, uh, and cool yellows to make the highlight. And then when you went around the top of the box and around the back, they went into browns and oranges. And then the magenta on the cloth, and then it went into red in the shadow. And here it's the opposite. So here it's picking up um, an orange light. And the yellow highlights there are these bright, bright um, uh, Oranges. I was wondering, does this look distorted to you? On my, well, from from my angle, it looks like way out of whack. But I was going, I don't remember that. <laughs> the perspective. So here, that the orange took on the red cloth, and then it went into purple in the shadows, and cool shadows over there, and the bright, uh, bright, uh, uh, orangey yellows and that. And then I found that when I was teaching this, that the students got confused. Because I was going, okay, so you've got gold, and you mix it with the cool light, and you've got then <laughs> green, and then they were like going, okay, this is too much. So I said, let's do it just white on white. So the concept is just taking white background, white cloth, white jar, and this one is a kind of orangey cream peach light, and then with blue shadows going on. Same concept. And this one switched to the light being a little uh, cooler. So it was um, a light, yellow light with purple shadows. So anyway, so that's a color theory and it's a lot of fun. And for sure, for any of you that are painters, when you want to, uh, when, you're, when your painting is turning muddy, it's nice to switch into color theory and think, oh, what am I, what's the color of my shadows? What's the color of my light? Uh, I recently got a car, and well, I got a car about two months ago, and I finally took it on a trip. So I went to um, Joshua Joshua Tree uh, last week. So this is a pastel from there. Um, probably 40 minutes, 45 minutes, trying to stay way under an hour. And it's beautiful, beautiful place. That's. I'm going there in the spring because I hear then it has all the flowers. It's really fantastic. And on that trip, I went to Salton Sea as well, and um, which is a really weird place. It's uh, really becoming very salty, and the fish are dying, and it's, it's shrinking, and it's kind of like a ghost town, um, but uh, but quite beautiful when you're out in the desert. And, um, and then it was also weird is that out there is that they have the the farms. They have all this water. I don't know where the water, because that's salt water. So they have, I don't know, they have a lot of farms there. So it's really cool. So I did those pastels. And then I'm uh, doing this yesterday. So this is um, my painting about this big. Um, and uh, I just started that uh, yesterday based on this concept. And uh, normally I work for, from dark to light, and so um, we'll see how, how this goes. 
but that's still wet. Um, this is a man moving forward. It's uh, 40 inches by 70 inches. Um, my first love in art when I was 11 was uh, Rembrandt. I was uh, with my grandmother and we're in a, walking down a street and there's a book. There's a portrait of a woman on the cover of this book. And I was frozen there for 15 minutes and my grandmother let me look at this book. And I was like, wow. And I turned 12 and then I got this heavy present, opened up and it was the book. Wow. And it was the complete works of Rembrandt. So that was like, whoa, this is incredible, this stuff. So this is kind of my ode to Rembrandt. This is my, my doing a classical thing, which is not really, I wasn't taught classical art. It's just something that I kind of absorbed. And, and the only color in this painting is uh, the highlight on his face and a little bit on his hand. A little bit over there. And... Um, when I'm doing a major painting like this, I don't have any time frame. I don't try to get it done. I don't care. I just keep going until it feels right. And his hand has been changed 25 times. It's gone. It's, I'll, do, I'll do a time lapse of it. It'll be really cool because it's going to go. <laughs> so I don't, I don't have that now. But, but um, I'm working on his hand. And... Four days ago, I had a model come, and so I wanted to get the hierarchy of light. And again, for you guys that are artists, is, is that it's really nasty, the problem, is that the light's hitting him here, and then his arm is going out of the light, but his arm is also coming forward. And usually, to make something come forward, you heighten the contrast. You make it light and dark and it zooms forward. And so, but the light is diminishing, so it's actually fading. So the light's fading away, but his hand's coming forward. <laughs> so it's almost the opposite of how you actually can make things, move things around in space. So I'm still trying to resolve it. And it's a, it's a very subtle thing. Oh, do I have the study of his hand? No, it's not in there. Let's see. So, and then uh, this painting is 44 by 60 inches. It's almost life size. Um, I started working on, I, I had the idea, the concept for it in 2002 when I lived in Rhodes, Greece. Beautiful place. Um, did a little tiny gestural sketch and said, that's a good idea. I'm going to do a real painting of that. And um, uh, tomorrow, tomorrow's uh, Friday. Today's Thursday. Tomorrow's Friday. Friday at 1, tomorrow I have a model coming to pose for his hand and for part of the butt and stuff. And then I'm, I'm almost finished with, with the painting. And... Uh, the good news is I sold it for a tiny fortune. Yeah. Woohoo! Right. So, and, <laughs> no, the money's coming in now. Oh, it's like, I didn't know if they bought it eight years ago or something like no, that. No, 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 it, it had to get, no, I, I, de, I just, just, just sold it. I mean, that's where the new car came from, so it was like new car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. and um, great collector. Um, and I'm, uh, let's see, about this painting, um, it came out of the, the feeling of joy, feeling excitement, wow. And it's like, how can I paint that? And then I just did a little sketch, and it had these two figures kind of in the same pose and slightly rotated. It's like, it's like a two-minute sketch. And I thought, I think that's going to work. And so I had two models that donated their time for this project. So, they, so I'm, now paying, I'm now paying them with the money for selling painting. I'm now paying them for the time they put into the painting. And they, they put in, oh, I mean, it was thousands of dollars of time. Wow. Yeah, it was, well, try doing their feet when they're standing like this. 
And then you're trying to draw the foot, and they're going like moving. And so the whole thing's done from scratch. So little drawings, and then developing it, and then putting it together. Um, Are you working on panel? It's, it's a canvas. It's a canvas, okay. Yeah, canvas. Linen. Can you ask a good question? Sure. So um, obviously, I'm not one of the artists, I'm an art enthusiast. Okay. But um, you, you like live models because of the reality of the lights, and of the way the light affects the actual human body, as opposed to doing it from a steady or a photograph or anything like that? Uh, well, I hate the photograph. I, I, I've, I've used them I mean, in the past, have, but. I've been using a number of models. Is that your well, problem? you end up using a number of models also if you take a little time. Like, I don't have the same models that originally posed for it. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm now here. So I'll get, you know, the guy posing tomorrow with someone else than the guy That's who originated right. for it. But to answer your question, it's uh, like when you're doing things out of your mind, out of your head, and you want to draw a foot. Mm -hmm. So it generically looks great. But then when you see a real foot, you go, look at that angle, look at that toe. That's more beautiful than I could have imagined. And then when you draw it, you can feel like, that looks horrible, my skills are terrible, I need to go do my anatomy and go, go, go do my homework. Or you go, click, click. So that click feeling you can have in real life. So like when you're doing a landscape outside and you can see the color of the shadows, it clicks. When you're doing it from photograph, it's like, that never feels right. And, what's, you know, and then you have to use all these tr tricks to try to get it to feel right, painterly tricks. But when you're there, you can actually have this clicking thing where things lock in. And that's really exhilarating. So it's like, it makes being in the moment really fantastic. Yeah, so. You can make a couple of with you all over the globe for years. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> They're always there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And so yeah. And so let's uh, bring it in the last minute or two. Well, this here. is the last, the last yeah. piece. Oh. Um, uh, something, I mean, aside from the emotion and the feeling of this piece that I really, uh, that, I mean, I'm, I'm happy with how, how they look. But I think the composition's really wild. This abstract negative space here, in her abstract negative space, is really powerful, and I think it's very modernistic, the, 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 the abstract sense of the composition and then it was kind of cool like if you imagine that if their poses were reversed where she was behind him his perspective he would be like three times bigger than she is mm -hmm. uh -huh. so putting her out in front made them almost like equal in size like their feet are not so far off mm -hmm. so that was an interesting that was an interesting way of solving that problem so it's called lovers jumping and I'm Michael Newberry michaelnewberry.com Thank you very much.